Hey guys, my name's Kandroth, and today I'm going to be doing a video on Fifth Form. So I had a viewer request a video about Musashi, and I said, look, I'm not going to do the unit analysis right now because there's no real relevant thing by which to do it. But if I were to make a video on Musashi, I knew what I would make it on. And so Fifth Form is what it's going to be about. And you may be wondering, well, why? So most of you guys on an A are used to seeing the first uh, form of this ability here, the unupgraded form, in which... Again, it doubles the number of hits when normal attacking for one turn. And I actually really like the way that Fandom words this because in game, it words it in a very confusing manner. It basically says that it halves the number of damage that you get from this, but it doubles the number of hits. So that you guys understand it, that just means it's doubling your hit counts, but it's keeping damage the exact same. So I think a lot of people got confused and they thought that this was somehow a damage lost at the expense of gaining more uh, MP generation. That is not the case at all. Again, uh, if anything, the ability actually increases damage due to the second part of it here. Uh, but even at, even at rank one, where it's 0% damage boost, it is still a net even effect. You do not lose any damage ever from using fifth form. So please understand that. But certainly now here recently on JP, they have upgraded fifth form and they have given it uh, basically three turn durations on that double hit effect, as well as uh, increasing the damage there and then adding on to it a damage cut ability for three turns of a thousand damage. So really, really nice, makes her a lot more tankier, gives her a lot better duration on her stuff. So that in and of itself wouldn't necessarily be worthy of making its own video. However, JP has had a lot of changes recently, including the change to the quick card, as well as the mighty chain that they have implemented. And that has caused me to question, did anything change with regards to how you're going to use Musashi? How are you going to use her correctly with fifth form, thanks to the mighty chain and quick changes? So what I did is I had my friend Bob come up with some uh, models for basically Musashi's card data with various buffs active. And so on screen now, you're going to see the slide that he made for me. And essentially, it is uh, with all three of her skills active. So not only her fifth form, but also her buster buff right here. And then also her star generation buff right here on the last one. And so there are some really unique uh, things that we can notice here. Now, I think certainly over time, one of the debated uh, issues with Musashi is, is how you're going to use her cards primarily due to her kit here. She has a triple buster kit with a single arts card and a single quick card. So naturally, if you're trying to use fifth form, a lot of people will say you're either using it for damage or you're using it for MP gen. But I also asked him to model card or sorry, star gen for me as well so that we would have an answer on that one. But just so you guys can see here, there's two very logical chains that you're going to probably use on the back end of an MP. Now you could flip around the Q&A, but I'm going to make a point on that as we go through here later. But again, this is just the first slide of several of them. The thing to note here is, yes, certainly you are going to, with a triple buster chain, because the NP is buster itself, get a shit ton of damage out of this. Obviously, you're not going to generate that much NP, and obviously you're not going to generate that much stars with this, but certainly you can definitely pump damage. However, if you wanted to go the more middle of the road route, you could go it into Q and A, and that would get you a mighty chain having been formed. And then similarly, you would still have really good damage, very good in P gen, and, you know, at least significantly better star gen from having done that. Here's the other thing to think about, though, with regards to this. As you start thinking about, okay, well, how much Noble Phantasm am I generating from using Buster Buster? It's only 7%. Keep in mind that if you're using some sort of setup like, say, Double K and Skya, you certainly can get even more charge out of this. So Koi and Skya's middle skill gives 10% charge for every buster card that you're going to use. Now, that is really nice, but if you have two Koi and Skyas, you're doubling that up for 20%. So a BB chain here is going to generate basically an additional 40 Noble Phantasm. So you're instead looking at 47% Noble Phantasm generated off of that chain. That's no slouch. And that might change the way you approach this if you're actually taking adequate supports. But maybe some of you would actually be taking Musashi in the solo environment and thus you're not going to have supports around her you're not going to be able to abuse that 
extra uh, charge off of Buster cards alone. So then at that point, yes, you would certainly favor the Q&A chain a little bit more for that. But again, that is with an NP lead. And if you're wondering again why you lead with the NP, it's because it is not affected by its positioning anywhere in the chain. So putting it later in the chain can only hurt subsequent cards, unless of course you're trying to start with a different lead card bonus. But again, if you form a mighty chain, you get all lead card bonuses off of that NP. So really, really nice in that regard. Certainly though here, looking at the actual card chains here, the three of a kind, You've got the mighty chain up here at the top for each one of these basically other than the triple buster chain but this one right here at the top is going to be your best damage chain um yeah sorry your best mighty chain that is a damage chain that, that'd be the better way to put it uh again you're going to get 37 uh k off of that and this is again i'm gonna assume bob this is with neutral damage correct so this is not effective damage necessarily but still really really solid numbers for that it is okay and then you're also going to have 56 percent np generated off of that and 28.4 stars now the stars generated here just to talk about this a little bit it's very tough to model star generation so this is more of an average number but it should serve for our purposes of displaying like hey this is where sort of the best chain is and this is where sort of the weakest chain is so certainly by looking at that you're like oh wow okay so that did decent damage but now let's compare the damage output to simply a triple buster chain again musashi's got the gorilla deck she can certainly pump damage in that regard so you guys can see how yes doing triple buster is still far more damage in that regard and that's something that seems to hold true with regards to the mighty chain mighty chains are an excellent way to get a lot of everything that your goals might entail when it comes to carding but certainly if your only goal is damage or NP generation or star generation, doing the three of a kind of that card type, naturally gonna produce the best results. That just is as it always has been. And that's one of the reasons that I actually really like the Mighty Chain. It sort of augments your carding capabilities without actually changing the status quo too much. So again, really, really nice there. Certainly you can also do the best uh, mighty chain for noble phantasm generation which is bqa here and that's going to get you 67 percent and you can see by comparison against something like qab which is uh you know only about somewhere around like 11 percent not even uh almost like 10 percent less uh noble phantasm generated so it might make a difference in an enemy like if you're if you're in a solo environment you're going up against an enemy that's going to hit you a lot Certainly that 67% might get you to the MP naturally just off of getting hit by the enemy, whereas 56% might not, but it's going to depend on the amount of hits that the enemy actually has and is performing on you. Certainly as well, if they're trying to perform something like skills, that might throw things out of whack as well. Then as we get to our last one down here, you guys can see this is ABQ. This is actually the best star generating chain. The one thing I did notice from this, and again, we are dealing with averages, is that this chain is not appreciably better than, say, for instance, the BQA chain. So honestly, you're still getting some decent star gen even off of something like this, but you're getting a significant amount more uh, Noble Phantasm generated out of it. Granted, the trade-off here is you are getting less damage comparatively between these two. So it is up to you to determine which one you wanted to use it on. But what happens if we change the buffs around? What if we don't have all of our buffs active? For instance, what if we took away the Star Jin buff, aka Musashi's third skill? Well, then naturally things might shift and you guys can actually see how things almost seem to tighten between these last two down here, where it's getting even closer and so the lines are getting blurred even more as to which one's actually better still you will notice almost none of these actually ever change places across all of these slides so basically we can always rely on the observations from that first slide to hold true but that's kind of why i pointed out some of the like comparative nature of things where you could say like look Certainly a, a QAB chain is generating 56%. The BQA chain is generating 67%. You're still getting pretty, pretty close there. So as long as you're uh, not super concerned or you know you're going to have to take two turns, you may as well take the chain that instead results in more damage or maybe the chain that results in more stars generated. It's up to you, but that's the way you have to kind of think forwardly if you're trying to card count and basically utilize your unit 
effectively in a solo environment you have to plan ahead so planning ahead how you pop things is certainly going to make a difference now again this is still with the buster buff so that is naturally going to make stuff like the triple buster chain pop off but even without that you're still going to notice it is still going to be constantly the top dog so again this is now without the buster buff but with the star gen buff and again the other thing to point out here guys is that the buster card is decent already at star gen it's not uh the best obviously quick is better but you do have arts which is worse than buster so buster sort of your middle of the ground star generator and that's one where it can definitely help you out but losing that buff means obviously star gen is going to come down some still it's better than the prior slide where we didn't have the star gen buff as you can now see that we're up to 34 and even up to 30 here so obviously the gap has widened back a little bit and that is what it is you're not getting too much fluctuation depending on which buffs you have active and that's kind of why i'm trying to say logically throughout all of this it's all going to stay the same but again it's still helpful to know it's still helpful to actually go through all of this and see do we have any sort of change up due to the fact of the uh the mighty chain and all of that so looking here now all we have is fifth form active which again remember that's doubling up your hit counts of all your cards that's really helping you out so certainly very nice and the other thing to uh understand as well is that fifth form does not apply to the np if that wasn't already clear it's only going to apply to subsequent carding that's why knowing when to use your fifth form is both and a, a thing that's going to matter to you for carding purposes but also like it may be a gamble that you take for maximizing damage output with something like a triple buster chain off the np it's up to you to determine whether or not you want to use it then and there and try to go for a kill versus try to play more constructively but still i'm gonna say the good part about that buff to fifth form is that it's three turn duration so that you no longer have to worry about too much you can instead say look i can choose to pop it now get to my np faster and still have the benefits on the back end of the np or something like that so certainly can be very useful to you and again if you end up at some point at like 96 percent and especially if you're in like a solo environment or something like that just go with your triple buster chain you will still get to the NP regardless because of uh, the extra card. And even if you somehow were somehow still short, you'd still have the enemy hits that would get you to it. So you don't have to worry about that too much either. Also, thanks to Mighty Chain. Exactly. And so again, just with fifth form active, you guys can still see logically everything remains the same. But fifth form is certainly accounting for a good chunk of damage there, a good chunk across the board but the one thing i have noticed is things actually get a little bit tighter now without the buster buffs basically the triple buster chains come back down to earth a little bit more whereas the mighty chain performance retains its capability so certainly that's something to to weigh in that as you back out the buster buff you've got instead some sort of increased significance for mighty chains that might weigh into your decisions a little bit more as a result of that and then for our last one here we've got no buffs active so this is essentially if you didn't have fifth form this is the baseline of her performance and you guys can see just how tight it is down here again on the star generation very close there now uh i tried to point out to you guys is now you guys can think about using her cards in a little bit of a different manner than before now all of a sudden you can start applying that mighty chain logic and remember the way that the mighty chains work is basically you get all the lead card bonuses and so whenever you're thinking about this the way to think about how to attack the situation is what do i need in that particular situation if you need damage then QAB is actually your best one because it turns the quick card into a buster bonus. So you're putting the weakest card first, but still getting the buster bonus and putting your stronger cards later in the chain. Similarly, if you just need something like Noble Phantasm Generation, you're putting the worst card for Noble Phantasm Generation in the front and then putting your stronger ones at the back end, but still getting it as if you had led with an arts card. So that's where it's really, really nice with regards to Mighty Chains. Same thing with the ABQ chain, your best star generator. You're putting your weakest star generation card at the front, but you're still getting that star generation bonus as if you had led with a quick. So that is how Mighty Chains change things up for you, but they're still not gonna overpower the raw results of again, like three of a kind for a card type. 
So if that's your only goal, certainly you're good. But again, I hope this video was at least informational to you. I hope this made you think about how you're going to use Musashi in the future. Now that she has a three turn buff, now that all of a sudden Mighty Chain exists and the quick cards are actually getting worked into chains some more. So it is a really, really intriguing thing to think about. And that is why I wanted to make a video on it. So again, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below and I will see you guys for the next video. Have a good one.